basically just a fancy word for unbind or come off. So it can refer to our proteins coming off of a column in protein chromatography or nucleic acids coming off of one of these little membrane spin columns. And so I don't have a clever intro, but hopefully I have some good info about elution. So I want to tell you about some of the terminology as well as various strategies we can use when we do elution. Things like stepwise gradients and gradients and isocratic elution and all this stuff. So let's dive in. So elution is basically just unbinding. Whether we're talking about protein chromatography where we're purifying proteins, or some sort of spin column with the silica column we're using to bind and purify nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. The principle is the same in that we're going to get our molecule of interest to bind to some sort of solid, some sort of stationary phase. This could be the resin, so those little beads in your chromatography column, or that silica membrane in that spin column. This, when you have your molecule of interest immobilized, this is then going to allow you to wash off the stuff that you don't want. And then when you want to actually purify your protein, so you've washed off, or your nucleic acids, so you've washed off all that stuff you don't want, now you need to get your molecule of interest, the thing you do want to actually release from that stationary phase. And this is the part that we call the elution. The liquid, so that the solvent that we're using to get our molecule to come out of the stationary phase is called the eluent. And the liquid that comes out with our molecule of interest, so that solution containing our molecule of interest is going to be our eluate. Although typically we often just refer to this as our elution. So what we're changing in order to get our molecule to bind or unbind is going to be the mobile phase. So this is going to be the liquid that's flowing through that stationary phase. So it's throwing, flowing through that resin or flowing through that membrane. And this is what we're going to change in order to dictate whether the molecule binds to the stationary phase. Basically, we want to manipulate whether the molecule prefers to hang out with the liquid. So is it soluble or is it going to hang out with the solid? Is it kind of bound to the solid? And the more that it likes the liquid, um, the more that it will be able to flow through, and the more that it likes the solid, the more stuck it's going to be. We can use different types of resin for protein chromatography, and we can use different membranes and things like this in order to um, bind to molecules of interest based on various features like tags or charge. And then by manipulating the buffer, by manipulating that liquid, the solvent, we can then dictate whether the, whether the liquid is more attractive than the solid. So for example, in our nucleic acid purification, by changing the pH and the salt content, we can make it so that the DNA or the RNA either likes to bind to the membrane or it doesn't. With protein chromatography, how we're often getting proteins to choose whether or not to hang out with the solid or the liquid is by introducing a competitor that's going to compete for binding sites on that solid. This could be an affinity chromatography where we're basically, we have our protein binding to resin based on some specific feature. This can be something like a his tag or a strep tag. And then we can wash the competitors off while our protein is specifically bound. And then we use a competitor that looks like that tag in order to compete off of our protein. So this could be a midazole in the case of a his tag or just thiobiotin or biotin in the case of a strep tag. In this way, we're then able to compete for those binding sites. And so we're not changing the solution so that the molecule doesn't really want to bind. We're just changing the solution so that the molecule, even though it still wants to bind, there are less binding spots available for it. And therefore it's going to come out, it's going to elute. Similarly, in charge, we can use salt. This comes into play in ion exchange chromatography. Here, the protein is binding to the column on the basis of opposite charges. We can then compete off with oppositely charged particles. Um, so we have ions, which are the components of salts. And so if you stick a salt like sodium chloride into water, what you're going to get is you're going to get a solution containing sodium ions, which are positively charged, and chloride ions, which are negatively charged. And these are going to be able to compete with the binding sites on that resin, and therefore it's going to push off or get your protein to elute. Now, how much salt you would need or how much competitor you need is going to depend on things like how tightly your protein is bound. 
And therefore we can use different concentrations in order to bind, to release things or loot things that are going to be loosely held or things that are going to be tightly held. And when we do an elution, we can do it in a few different ways. One is a simple stepwise elution. We go from a low concentration of our competitor or assault, et cetera. Basically, we want to start under conditions with which our molecule of interest is going to bind. Now, once we've had it bound, you're going to have some stuff that's just going to go straight through during that binding period. Now, this is called our flow through. So this is going to be the non-bound things. So if you take the input containing everything and you stick it through the column, what's going to come through is going to be your flow through. Now, this is going to be everything. You can see that this is the protein of interest I'm trying to purify. You can see that it shouldn't be in this flow through fraction, whereas everything else should be. Now that your protein is actually bound on there, often there's still going to be some stuff, um, some other proteins kind of lingering around before, so you need to actually wash it. Now, when you wash it, what you might be doing is you might be using that same mobile phase that you used for your input. And so this would be some sort of mild conditions under which your protein doesn't bind, your protein binds, but other things don't. However, you still might have some lingering things around. And so what you might want to do is you want to actually want to increase the concentration of your competitor, of your salt, change the pH, whatever you're using to elute, go like partway there. Not enough to actually get your protein to come off, but enough pr to get proteins that are more weakly bound to come off. I'm talking a lot in terms of proteins, but this can also refer to purification of other molecules. So often what you do is instead of just going from a straight step from a low competitor concentration to a high competitor concentration, so the single step, what you can do is you can actually add a medium concentration wash step in order to remove the weakly bound molecules. So you might use something at a medium concentration in order to get some of these loosely bound things to, um, to elute. And note that this is a different size protein that I'm purifying. This is a different pur purification, um, but you can see that in a wash step, you would get a fewer things than you would get in your flow through, but you'll still get a little bit of stuff before you actually elute. Now, stepwise can be good if you have an idea about what what concentration your protein is going to elude at and what concentration other things might elude at. Um, but it's not good if you, if you don't know. So basically the benefit of doing one of these stepwise elutions over one of these is that, um, I mean, like doing a medium, like multiple steps instead of just a single step is that if you have mediumly bound molecules that are bound at this low concentration, then even if they were to be able to release at this medium concentration, if you just go straight to the high concentration, they're going to come off along with your protein. And so there's no way to separate them from your protein because once you get up here, it's just all going to come off. But if you add this medium step, now you have your protein of interest is still going to be isolated from these medium things because what you're doing is you're adding this medium step at which the proteins can come off, the medium rebound proteins can come off. And by doing it in this stepwise manner, you're then kind of protecting yourself in that if your molecule of interest does come off at this lower concentration, well, you haven't lost it. Um, you haven't basically made it so that it just goes with everything. So you still kind of separated things out, but just part-wise. So if you have some of your protein in here, um, then you can actually might be able to still use it. It might be that your protein actually does come out here instead of here. Um, but by doing it in this stepwise way, you're still able to then separate it from the stuff that didn't bind at all. But the problem with a stepwise elution like this is that you kind of have to have a sense of where you, what concentration your protein might come out with. But a benefit is that you can do it manually. So you can do it by gravity flow. So when we're doing a protein purification, we might do it using a protein purification machine like an FPLC on a fast protein liquid chromatography machine like an ACTA. Now these are really nice in that they can mix buffers for you. So they can say, take a buffer that has no con that has a low concentration or no, no concentration of competitor and one that has a high concentration and kind of mix the two for you. And this is going to allow you to do a gradient elution, where basically you can start from that low concentration and then gradually raise to that high concentration of your competitor, of your salt, et cetera. You can do this on one of these actas, and this is really great when you're not exactly sure where your protein is going to come off. 
A downside of a gradient elution is that you can end up making it so that if your your protein might come off over a very large volume. Um, with a stepwise elution, you can make it so that you just kind of like all comes off at once. With a gradient, you're gonna get you might get some sort of really broad peak, and then you're gonna have to concentrate it down. Um, but this can separate out proteins that are going to be bound to with different strengths. The things that are going to be bound the tightest are going to come off last. They're going to require the most competitor. And the things that are um, the least tightly bound will be, will be able to come off first. And if you were to look at a chromatograph, so when you're using one of those actas, it'll give you a UV trace. Um, what you'll see is something like this. When you do that column wash, so basically you just have the low concentration um, to remove nonspecific binders. So this could be either just what you bound it at or just a slightly higher concentration. You typically don't want to have no competitor. You typically want to have a low level. So this would be a low level of mimetosol or it'd be a low level of salt, um, but not zero. Um, for reasons I talked about in my crashing out post, you don't you pretty much never want to have your protein at zero salt. It's going to make it unhappy and potentially crash out or precipitate. Um, and similarly, you want to have a low concentration of your competitor of, or of your salt so that you don't get just tons of nonspecific binding to the column. You need to have a little bit of competition in there so that the protein, um, not all the proteins can bind. It has to have a little bit of um, stronger affinity to bind. And then you can do your stepwise elution or your gradient elution. And when you're doing one of these, you're typically collecting fractions. So what you're doing is you're basically, you can choose the fraction size and base and collect little like portions of it. And then compare those portions to your chromatograph, or if you're doing this manually, or if you're doing gravity flow with one of these like columns, you can then you can go and you can measure the concentration in these different fractions with a method like spectroscopy um, or with a Bradford or some other protein concentration assay um, to see which fractions actually have your protein of interest and run a gel to see how pure those fractions are and which ones you want to like pool together. So those we're talking about these elutions where we're kind of pushing our molecule off. And in these cases, we're changing the buffer condition so that our molecule goes from wanting to hang out in the, in the stationary phase, so on that resin or on that membrane, to wanting to hang out in the liquid, the mobile phase. So going from dissolving into that elution, um, that eluent that we add, um, and then coming off as this eluate. But sometimes elution is kind of, we use this term elution even when we're not like pushing a molecule off, the molecule's just coming off. And in this case, well, we're, we're not changing the buffer. We call this an isocratic elution. The time, the place that we're going to see this come up is with size exclusion chromatography or gel filtration. In this technique, we're separating proteins on the basis of their size. And how it works is that the proteins aren't actually sticking to the column. They're just flowing through the resin. And the resin is actually has all these little pores in it. And some of these pores are going to be really small, and some of them are going to be bigger. The bigger the protein is, the fewer pores it's able to access. And if it can't get into those smaller pores, then it doesn't have to take those secret tunnels and it's going to take a shorter route. It can go like kind of around the beads instead of through them. So the bigger things are going to come off first in size exclusion chromatography. And the smaller things are going to come off later. We still call it elution when they're coming off, even though we're not actually like pushing them off. And but we're using a single buffer, and so we're going to call this an isocratic elution. So an isocratic elution, what we're going to have is we have a single buffer, and when we have a stepwise elution, we and or a gradient elution, we're going to have at least two buffers. We're going to go from a low to a high con concentration of our competitor or a salt or whatever. It could also be a change in the pH, some sort of conditions under which you bind and conditions under which you don't bind and then some sort of you can have some sort of intermediate between the two with stepwise you're going from one straight to another you can add a medium step um so it doesn't have to be just a single step you can have multiple steps good for isolating things that are mediumly bound and then if you're not sure where it'll come off and if you have access to like an acta where you can easily mix the concentrations you can do some sort of gradient in any of these cases, we call it the um, we call it an elution when the protein is actually coming off of the column. 
It's technically called an LU8, the stuff that comes off, but often we just refer to it as an elution. When you're doing a purification, you're often going to run a gel to show and look and see how the purification went, whether you're losing your proteins in, in the flow through, so you don't want to see your protein of interest in the flow through. If you do, it could be that it's not binding very tightly, or it could be that you just have overloaded your column. So if you have a really, really strong band in your elution, it could just be that you need to add more resin. You need to use the larger resin volume or use less of your protein, load the column multiple, use multiple columns or something like this. If you're just kind of like overloading all the binding sites and some of it's gonna come off in the flow through. Ideally, all of it will be in the elution. And same with the wash. If you see stuff coming off in the wash, it could be because you have too much or it could be because your molecule is not binding that tightly. The way that you can tell is to see how much of it comes off in the elution. If you're getting a ton in the elution and you have a little bit in your wash or in your flow through, then it's probably just that you're overloading the column. But if you don't have that much in your elution, if it's mostly in your wash or your flow through, then that's indicating that your protein isn't binding very well. In the case of a um, affinity chromatography step, this could be because your tag is kind of hidden. Um, you could try lowering the concentration of the competitor that you're using during your wash steps, but still you're going to have issues if you have other proteins than weekly binding. So it might be worth trying to change the linker length, um, positioning of the tag, use a different tag, things like this. For ion exchange chromatography, you might need to change the salt or the pH so that your protein is going to be more oppositely charged and thus bind better. In any of these cases, hopefully in your LU8, it's going to be fairly pure. You can see that there's still kind of this impurity in this protein prep. So then you would take this on, if you wanted a really pure protein, you could take this on to additional chromatography steps like ion exchange chromatography or size exclusion chromatography. And often what we do is we actually do a workflow where we go from one chromatography column to the next. Hope this helped you understand the terms regarding elution. Remember, it's basically just a fancy word for unbinding.